Okay, now that we have seen some of the bone markings, let's look at the actual structure list. And of course, the bones are divided up into the appendicular and axial skeleton. We're going to start with the axial skeleton. And one of the major parts of the axial skeleton is actually the skull. So the skull is actually divided up into the cranium, the cranial portion, the part that kind of covers the brain, and the facial bones. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the cranium and look at the bones affiliated with the cranium. And so notice here in our structure list, what we have is we have the actual name of the bone, frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone, occipital bone, and so forth. Notice that these bones are actually highlighted and boldened. And so, uh, uh, so this is the bone. And then what falls under on the structure list is something we can find on that bone. So notice under the temporal bone, we have several structures that would belong to the temporal bone. Now, bones are actually organs. And so uh, when I talk about something like the the uh, the stylomastoid foramen or the uh, something like the mastoid process, those are not actually organs. They're actually part of an organ. In this case, they would be part of the temporal bone. So I'm going to run down through the list and try to show you the bones and then show you parts on the bone. And we'll be using several sources uh, for showing you these. Unfortunately, this is where seeing something two-dimensionally is not as, as good as seeing something three-dimensionally that you can get your hands on, but we'll do the best with what we have, including using part of the mastering AMP. So again, let me remind you, cranium itself is not a bone. It is an area of bones. Facial is not a bone but there are several facial bones. Okay, so everything down to, and this should say inferior nasal conchi instead of inferior nasal bone. Okay, so mandible, maxilla, palatine bone, zygomatic bone, lacrimal bone, nasal bone, vomer, and inferior nasal conchi are all bones. They are all facial bones. So these are literally the organs. These are parts of that organ. So first of all, let's just run down the actual the actual organs and look at pictures of the actual organs, the actual bones. Then we'll come back and we'll discuss the parts of each of these bones. So let's start out with the frontal, parietal, and temporal bones. So one thing that you will have access to is some PowerPoints that actually will have both the list of bones, but more importantly, we'll actually have a picture of an actual skull or the actual bones, and then we'll be tagged so you can hopefully see, you know, the the uh, names and what area of the picture that they are pointing to. So we started out and said that we would look at the frontal bone. The frontal bone is basically this bone here in the forehead region. And the parietal bone is this bone on top of your head sitting behind the forehead region. Here we see the temporal bone which is kind of around your ear area, including this little protrusion back here we'll talk about in a few minutes. So it's this region kind of in the side of your head. And then again, we can see the individual frontal bone here. Notice that those are where your eye sockets would be, part of your eye sockets, part of what's called the orbital. But this whole bone is the frontal bone. Notice again, um, here's the temporal bone, which is sitting on the side of the head by itself. And... Looking at another picture, we actually see the parietal bone sitting behind the frontal bone. Now, this picture is good because it actually does show the cranial bones versus the facial bones here. And notice here's our count. Notice that I've got these eight cranial bones and these 14 facial bones. And it sounds like a lot of bones, but understand some of these are duplicated. So I would have two temporal bones, one on one side of my head, one on the other side of my head. But I only have one frontal bone. Notice one frontal bone, that forehead bone. And I would have two parietal bones. So again, notice our counts here. All right, and of course, all of these belong to the axial skeleton and the skull portion of the axial skeleton. Okay, so uh, we can also see from this picture, we can see some of the other, you know, uh, cranial bones, which are on our first page. We can see the we can actually see part of the sphenoid bone. We'll look at that. It looks more like a bat, actually. We can see part of the ethmoid bone. It's kind of an unusual looking bone. We can see the occipital bone in the back of the head. Now, again, from this perspective, you can see the frontal bone really well, the forehead bone, 
sitting behind it, the parietal bone, and then to the side, the temporal bones. Here, looking down from a superior vision, we can see the parietal bones right and left. Okay, here's another good picture of the frontal bone, the parietal bones behind it, the temporal bones on the side, the occipital bone in the back, and then, uh, you know, uh, this phenoid bone and the ethmoid bone, we can kind of see partially superficial, partially covered by other bones. Now, if we go to our mastering a &P and go to the study area, notice we've got this really good tool here called Practice Anatomy Lab, and this will really help us on these things that we don't have models for, but that we can see a somewhat of a three-dimensional perspective from. So I'm going to click on that. This is going to come up. We're going to go ahead and hit anatomical or hit this. And then when this structure comes up, I'm going to slide over here. We're going to go to anatomical models and go to, again, ax axial skeleton, which is what? And we're going to we're talking about the skull right now. So I'm going to hit skull. Then notice what we have here. So we have this really great view of a skull and we can actually uh, hit show gallery and this will tell us the different views that we can get of the skull. Notice I got the front view here. I've got the side view here. So let's just go with the front view like we've got here. And then I've got this little portion that, can, that says show labels. So I'm going to hit show labels. Now, again, we have to understand you know, what what perspective is this showing? And right now, this is showing a little bit deeper than the actual big bone portions that we're looking at. But we know that the frontal bone was this forehead region. One of the per, one of the parts of that frontal bone actually on our list is the glabella. So when I click on that, I can actually hear the pronunciation of the name. Glabella. Okay, and see where that's at. Okay, so um, we can... Uh, actually go to different different perspectives. Now notice this perspective here, a side perspective, it does show the bones we're looking at, okay? And and what you can either do, you can either just click on the bone and it'll highlight the name. Parietal bone. Or click on the bone and highlight the name, or click on the name and it'll highlight Spheroid the bone, bone and then pronounce it. So this is a really great tool from seeing the skull from several different perspectives. And then there's even little quizzes. So again, I'm going to pull this over. There's little quizzes you can do over the material. So I'm going to highly encourage you to use this Mastering a &P as you study these things, especially these bones, and give you probably some activities to do on that. But, but you should be trying to do this as much on your own to learn it as possible. Okay, I, one more thing. So let's just look real quick at this. Okay, so here we see the frontal bone. Here we see the parietal bone. The temporal bone. The occipital bone. Okay, the sphenoid bone. Okay, and then, um, and then those are the bones that we could see from the cranial region on this. But you can see, obviously, there are going to be some bones from the facial region that you can also see on this. So again, I want to highly encourage you to go to this site and get your structure list out and just see, hey, can I identify these things? So again, back to our structure list, we we saw the frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone, and then we kind of looked at the occipital bone at the back of the head, the sphenoid bone, it's a bat-shaped bone that we see part of it on the side of the head, and then the ethmoid bone, which we actually see from several perspectives, we actually can see it from the orbital of the eye, but we can also see it looking up through the nose because we have to understand that you can see some of these bones from different perspectives. Notice here's the ethmoid bone, and here I can look in the orbital of the eye. And even though there are other things that help make up the orbital of the eye, the ethmoid is one of the things that does make up the orbital of the eye. From a front view, though, notice the this green area here again is the ethmoid bone, but so is this green area here which has some parts we're going to talk about. They are part of the ethmoid bone, and we're going to look at these parts later. But So notice, I can see the ethmoid bone by looking up the nasal area, but I can also see it from the eye area. And not only can I see it from the nasal and the eye area, I can see part of it if I look down into the uh, skull area where the brain would sit on top of it.
So if I took the skull cap off called the calvarium and I look down and the brain would be sitting right in here, this portion of that bone actually sits uh, right underneath the brain and it kind of fits in here with part of the frontal bone and up against some other bones we're going to talk about later. Here's the sphenoid bone, however, uh, that bone that we can see partly from the side. So looking at it from the side here, I can see this portion from the side, but here from this perspective, I'm literally looking at what we, the side part, I'd have to look from this area and I'd be seeing this region right here from the outside. But the majority of the sphenoid bone, I can literally see uh, where the brain is sitting on top of it and it's sitting behind the ethmoid in the frontal bone. If I look at an inferior perspective of the skull, though, this region right through here, including these areas, and, and two-dimensionally, it's hard to tell what this is, but these are like two feet projecting back at you. And I'll talk about those a little bit later. But this whole purple area through here from an inferior perspective is still the sphenoid bone. Okay, notice that we also have the occipital bone back here at the base of the skull. And it's got this big hole in here because this is obviously where your brain and your spinal cord are going to come together at this hole. Okay, because we have to have things run up into, you know, their spinal cord runs up and, and basically transitions and becomes the brain. But we also have blood vessels and nerves and stuff running up through this area. Okay, from our structure sheets, we basically have covered the frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, sphenoid, and ethmoid bones. And we'll come back and look at the parts of them. But our facial bones, notice, uh, our, our facial bones, which basically go from the mandible, maxilla, palatine, zygomatic, lacrimal, nasal, vomer, and inferior nasal conchi, then they don't have near as many parts to them, with the exception the mandible has several parts, the maxilla. So let's quickly run down these actual individual parts and look and see what they look like on pictures. So again, we're basically looking at this group right here. Notice again, most of them are duplicated. Uh, even though there are a few that just have one representation, you don't have two jaw bones or mandibles, you just have one. But you do have two cheekbones, or the zygomatic bone. Okay, so the maxillary bone is probably the most recognizable facial bone. Okay, maybe followed closely by the mandible. But if you saw this bone, and let's look at that, and you have two of them, notice this bone right here. You know, you can see where it forms the front of the face, so therefore it is a facial bone. Okay, all right. Then the palatine bones kind of form the back of the roof of your mouth. Okay, so you actually, this yellow area here, actually fall behind the maxilla, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But I have two palatine bones there, kind of form the top of the roof of the mouth, the back portion at least. Looking at a model of the maxilla, this big bone actually right here. But if we start here and run down and then curve outward, we see kind of an L shape. And that is at the back and it would fit right back here. That's why that's pointing to the palatine bone. We'll go right back here. It's an L shaped bone and we have two of them. And it sits in this portion of it is at the back roof of the mouth. Notice that's the back teeth here. So this portion back here. So I know it's kind of hard to see two dimensionally, but it's an L-shaped bone that forms the back of the roof of the mouth. Again, we see the maxilla being this very recognizable facial bone. Here we see the palatine forming part of the palate of the, of the mouth. So again, from here to this point, you can see like a little division right there. This is the maxillary bone up through here with the teeth hanging on it. But this portion forming part of the roof of the mouth and then coming up and, and actually forming an L shape is the palatine bone. Okay, right here we see the nasal bone. And of course, that's probably not too hard to figure out. It's in the upper portion of your nose. That part becomes a bone while the bottom portion of your nose actually stays cartilage. So this is that upper hard portion on your nose. You do have two of them. Got this large bone down here, your jawbone called a mandible, one of them. Okay, you actually have two cheek bones called zygomatic bones. So looking here, you can see the two cheek bones, the zygomatic bone and the one big mandible. 
Got a very small bone in the corner of the eye called the lacrimal. Lacrimal means tear. 